Today we are covering section 4.2. Section 4.1, we designed a chart of accounts and introduced account numbers and something called a general ledger. Today we are going to utilize that general ledger. So we are going to take information from our journal, which we used in chapter three, and start posting that those amounts to our individual general ledger accounts. So posting is just the transferring of information from our individual journal entries into those separate ledger accounts. There are two big rules when posting. When we are posting journals, general amount columns, those, post, those are posted individually to those individual accounts, which you'll see a sec, in a second in mind tab. We also have something called special amount columns um, which those are not going to be posted individually. Those are going to be posted as column totals. So if we're looking at this image of our journal, these amounts in our general debit and credit are going to be posted individually. Any amount in one of these two special amount columns, so our sales credit or either our cash debit or credit, are not going to be posted individually. We're going to post those as the totals, which is going to save a ton of time and effort instead of having to post the individual ones. So here's the main steps to posting. First, we're going to write in the date. So if I was posting this transaction of supplies here from my journal, I would go to my supplies account, write in this exact same date, January 2nd. I would also write the journal page number in my post ref. So here's my post ref spot. I'm going to get the journal page number from whatever page number I'm on. So in this case, journal page one. I debited supplies for $165 and I credited cash. So essentially, I bought supplies with cash. This $165 falls in a special column. I don't have to worry about that yet. The only amount I'm worried about is this debit amount in the general. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to debit supplies 165, and then I'm going to update my balance over in the balance column. I have to remember what type of an account supplies is. Supplies is an asset account, therefore it gets a $165 debit balance. Okay, let's go to my tap work together. So last chapter or last section, sorry, we created this chart of accounts. We are going to utilize these accounts as we post information from our journal. So Omar owns a service business. Okay, so the first account down here in our journal is Omar's Capital. And that transaction, we received cash and his investment from Omar. So I'm going to go down to Omar's Capital account. I'm going to enter the exact same date, April 1st. The post ref is going to be the page number. In this case, I'm on journal page one. It was a credit of $2,500. I'm gonna do the same thing in the ledger account. And then all I have to do is update Omar's ledger balance for his capital account. Capital holds a credit balance. So I'm going to update that balance. The last step is I have to take this account number 310 and record it next to that transaction, which A, indicates I posted it, and B, indicates exactly where that transaction has been recorded in. Next, prepaid insurance. I'm going to record my date, April 3rd. Post ref, I'm still on journal page one. It was a debit of $330. Remember, we're just recording the debit and credit columns of this general. We don't have to worry about sales credit or cash. So we're just worried about this 330. We're gonna record it as a debit because that's what happened. Supply or prepaid insurance is an asset. So it holds a debit balance. Then I'm gonna take this account number 140 and record it. Supplies, 160. We can see that we bought supplies on account. So this is a two-part transaction. So I'm going to go to supplies, enter the date, April 4th, journal page one, $160 debit, 
Supplies is also an asset, so it will have a debit balance of 160. I'm gonna take my account number 130. The second part of this transaction has to do with accounts payable. So I'm going to go to my accounts payable account, enter in the same date, April 4, journal page one. It was credited for $160, it's in the credit side. Accounts payable is a liability, so it holds a credit balance. Account number 210. This next transaction has a check mark, which indicates both amounts are going to be found in special columns. Since these are special columns amount, all I have to do here is place a check mark because I will record these when I record the totals. So my next one is accounts receivable, Dan Carroll. Looks like he came in and paid off part of, or sorry, looks like we sold something to him on account. So accounts receivable. April 9th, journal page one, it was $122 debit. Accounts receivable is an asset, so it would also get a $122 debit balance. Update the account number. Next is rent expense. April 12th, journal page one, $260 debit, which is going to update my balance, since it's an expense account, it's a debit balance, and then record my account number 510. Accounts payable, we are now paying off part of our bill. So accounts payable, since I've already recorded the month April, since we're still in April, all I have to do is put the date now for my second transaction. We're still on journal page one. It was a debit of $80. So I'm going to be on the debit side. Accounts payable holds a credit balance. So what this is that what this debit is doing, it is decreasing my balance by $80. So my new balance and accounts payable is going to be 160 minus 80, which is $80. Take my account number 210. All right, two more. Dan Carroll's coming in and paying off his bill. Same thing, since I already have April in here, all I have to do is put in the 16th. Journal page one, it is a credit of $65. Accounts receivable is an asset. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna take $122 minus $65, which leaves me a $57 balance. Record my account number. Last one is the drawing. So Omar took $500 out of the business. I'm back to writing April because this is the first entry. 25th, journal page one. It was a debit of 500. Owner's drawing holds a debit balance. And then record my account number. And that is all you're doing for 4-2. Don't forget to do the on your own in terms.